Hi, this is Alan Gleason for ADSR. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for regular tutorials. In this video, we will look at Ableton Live Saturator device. Saturator is a way shaping effect that can add the missing dirt, punch, warmth to your sound. So says the manual. It can add subtle or hard harmonic distortion into input signals, whatever flavor you choose. The controls within the device give you plenty of opportunity to color and shape the sound in a variety of ways. When reaching for a saturator, there's a number of tasks that it's particularly useful at. It's important to remember that it's a dynamic effect. The way it reacts and its output is dependent on the input signal. It can be used as a dynamic nonlinear distortion effect, a wave shaper, or an analog drive simulation effect. It can control transients and peaks or limit the dynamic range of a signal and in the process add extra harmonics. In doing so, it can make a sound louder without adding amplitude or increasing its volume. Used subtly, it can simulate analog warmth, soft clipping, or used in the extreme, it creates hard overdrive clipping. It can help glue elements together and add that analog touch and can add more presence to a sound and make them sound more upfront and in your face. To explain the device, I'm using an operator generating a sine tone at 100 Hz being fed into the saturator. I'm using the JO oscilloscope, an Ableton Spectrum device to help us visualize what's happening when we're altering the controls on the device. I have the saturator in a rack and the reason for doing this is that when you increase this drive control here, you will increase the signal's output level. So I've got this macro mapped to drive but I also have it mapped to our output level. So when I'm adding drive, it's decreasing the output level and it's helping us to hear the effect more clearly and not just the level boost. So when I play my tone, to begin with, we're just getting our sine tone reflected in the spectrum and the oscilloscope here. As I start to turn up my drive, we're in analog clip curve mode here. I can start to see additional harmonics appearing in the sound as a result of the saturation that's been applied. The different curve modes that you have access to clip and add harmonics in different ways. When we select our different curves, the XY grid at the top here changes to give us an impression of what that curve is. I'm just going to click on the unfold here so we can get a better view of the curve. The X axis represents our input signal and the Y axis represents our output signal. So as our input signal starts to approach zero, it will start to be clipped and that's what's happening here. So when it starts to approach zero, it starts to get clipped and the additional harmonics start to appear. So these are all odd numbered harmonics, so similar to like a square wave, so that's the fundamental frequency there. This is the third harmonic, this is the fifth harmonic, this is the seventh, ninth, eleventh, and so on. There is some second order harmonics there, or that's the second harmonic, the fourth harmonic, and so on, but they're at a lower level. As I increase the drive, the level of the harmonics will increase and we'll get more of them in the upper frequency range. We'll audition the different curve modes and hear the effect that they have. So that was our analog clip mode. We have a soft sign mode and you'll notice that the shape has changed so that the clipping comes on a bit sooner. The medium curve is even steeper in that the clipping begins at lower levels. We have a hard curve. Clipping is applied almost immediately and it comes on quite abruptly. And this is reflected in our, in our spectrum here and also our oscilloscope and it's approaching a square wave. You've got sinusoid fold, which is a different mode to all the others, and you can see that reflected in the shape, in that the signal gets folded back down when it reaches zero. So we can see this if we reduce our drive. We can see that we start off with a sine wave, and as the signal approaches clipping, it starts to get folded back down. So this mode has a slightly different character to the other modes that we've looked at already. Next, we have digital clip, which simulates digital clipping. So if you've ever overloaded your master fader in Ableton, this is a sort of sound and result that you'll get in your output. So when compared with the analog clip, the clipping comes on softer in analog mode and it's more abrasive in digital clip mode, it comes on more extreme. So each of these modes color the sound and add harmonics in slightly different ways. Again, this is all dependent also on the input signal. If you're going for analog simulation, bit of dirt, bit of warmth, you use lower drive settings. The higher the settings, the more extreme and the more distortion will be added to the signal. The last mode is Wave Shaper. In this mode, we have additional controls that become active and allow us to shape the waveform. This is one of the most flexible modes of the saturator and is capable of a huge variety of sounds. So if I reset the drive to zero, 
all my controls apart from linear and drive are set to zero and if I bypass the effect it's having no effect. I'll increase the drive we can see some additional harmonics being added. The first control here drive affects how the input signal influences all the other parameters. The linear mode changes the shape from linear to a non-linear which has more of an obvious effect when we start to adjust the other parameters. Linear, curve and depth work together so if I turn up the curve this will bring additional harmonics into the sound, make the sound brighter. The effect of the damp control turns down the signal around the crossover point between the X and the Y grid. The effect of this varies depending on the other settings. It can either have a dampening effect or just alter the frequency content of the sound. The depth control controls the depth of a superimposed sine wave on our wave shape. So when I turn this up, you'll see various bends coming in to our wave shape. I'll adjust the linear mode, give us a better view of it here. And again, as I'm adjusting the damp control here, you can see it altering the wave shape around the crossover point there. And you can see the effect in the harmonic content in the spectrum here. You can see in the wave shape here, this is producing a much more complex result than some of the other modes. If you go back and compare some of them, we have various forms of our sine wave been clipped. The sinoid will be a bit different because we're getting wave folding and then the wave shaper is even more complex. The period adjusts the density of the superimposed sine wave so you can see more curves coming into our wave shape. So as well as the plug-in itself being dynamic based on input signal the controls themselves are dynamic, so when you adjust one, it will have an effect on the other controls. So with drive turned all the way to zero, the wave shaper will have no effect on the input signal. Other controls that we have, we have a DC filter here and that filters out very low frequencies below what's audible and it can also reset the signal around the zero axis. Various processing can sometimes offset and that can affect the overall amplitude of the signal. Turning on colour, we get access to two filters. The first filter just has a bass control which alters the range of where the filter is affecting the sound. Higher settings affect the higher frequency content more where lower settings reduce the saturation on the high frequencies and focus the effect more in the lower frequencies. The second filter here has three controls. We've got a control for depth, which affects how much, positive or negative, the filter has. We've got our frequency control. And the width, so it's the Q or the range of the filter. Higher settings will allow more filtering to occur. In our master section here we've got soft clip, turning this on has a similar effect to our analog clip so if you're applying a lot of harsh distortion using one of the other curve modes this can help round it off and make it sound a bit smoother. We've got an output control and we've got a dry wet control which is useful when we want to do some parallel processing, maybe applying some hard distortion and we can blend in some of the original signal. So the saturator is a very powerful device when working in the digital domain in that it allows you to add certain qualities associated with analog such as harmonic distortion to your signal. Used subtly, it can bring warmth and glue things together. Used in extremes, it's a great sound design tool. So hopefully you found this interesting and it demystified some of the questions you had about Ableton's saturator device. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for regular tutorials. This has been Alan Gleason for ADSR and I'll talk to you again soon.